Hey guys, welcome to today's MCAT question of the day. As always, we'll be working through one of the many MCAT practice problems found at MCATselfprep.com, home of the free MCAT prep course. I'm Dalton, a 100th percentile MCAT tutor, and today I'll be working through this problem with you as though you were one of my private tutoring students. This problem comes from the end of lesson mastery quiz in lesson two of the biology two module. Be sure to hit pause and try it for yourself before watching my explanation. In order to really ace this question, we need to understand a little bit more about what osmotic pressure is and how that relates to the way that the kidney works. So first of all, if you look here on the right, I've drawn a little diagram and I want you to imagine that we have a membrane here in the middle. On the one side, we have lots of water with a little bit of solute, so it's very dilute. On the other side, we have water with a lot of solute, and so it's very concentrated. Now this difference in concentration on either side of the membrane is referred to as a concentration gradient, and it creates osmotic pressure, which essentially means that the water on this side is going to want to flow towards the side where there's more solute, the side where there's a higher concentration. And that's really important to how the kidney works. This is a picture of a nephron inside the kidney, and a nephron always runs through two different sections of the kidney. We have the cortex up here and the medulla down below. Now what happens is blood flows through here and is pumped out into these little tubules. The blood cells stay inside, but we have water, waste, solutes, all kinds of other things that go into these yellow tubes, and that's called filtrate. Eventually, that filtrate's gonna make its way all the way into this collecting duct over here and leave the body, which is great. We want that waste out of our body, but the problem is we don't wanna lose all that water that's initially here at the beginning. So the body needs a way to essentially get water out of these yellow tubes and back into the body before it leaves. So how are we going to do that? That's where the countercurrent multiplication system comes in. This is the thick ascending loop of Henle. And this thick ascending loop of Henle essentially pumps solutes out. It pumps them out. So this space here is full of solutes. It's very concentrated. That creates a concentration gradient. The medulla is going to be very concentrated. And so when the filtrate comes through this tube here, the water is going to want to flow out and back into the body. Eventually, as more water flows out, we get to the point here in the collecting duct where now we have very concentrated filtrate because a lot of the water has gone back to the body. And that's going to be really important. Now let's come back to the question and take a look at our answer options. The question here basically explains a little bit about kidneys and about countercurrent multiplication, and then it asks us which of the following describes a kidney with functional countercurrent multiplication. Well, our first option, number one, a higher solute concentration deep in the renal medulla. And that's exactly what we were talking about. We talked about how that thick ascending loop of Henle is going to pump solutes out. So deep in the medulla, it's going to be very concentrated. That's correct. Next option higher osmotic pressure near the renal cortex. Well, we talked about how it's that concentration gradient that's creating the osmotic pressure. And we know that in the cortex, it's not going to be as con concentrated. That difference isn't going to exist. And so this option here is incorrect. Finally, concentrated filtrate in the collecting duct. Well, that's going to be correct because that's exactly what the goal was all along. Remember, because we're able to get the water out in the medulla, by the time we get to the collecting duct at the end, the, the filtrate is going to be very, very concentrated. So that means our correct answer is right here, one and three. Let's test it out. Perfect, spot on. If you enjoyed this MCAT question of the day, be sure to give it a like. If you want to see more MCAT questions of the day, be sure to subscribe to this channel and enroll in our free MCAT prep course found at MCATselfprep.com. If you really want to maximize your MCAT score, be sure to check out our elite tutoring services and request a free phone consultation with any of our available tutors. We'd love to chat with you about your situation and how you can maximize your MCAT score. We look forward to hearing from you and we'll see you next time.